Good day everyone! In our previous topic, we talk about how atoms become stable through chemical bonding. We also talk about ionic bond and covalent bond. For the recap, ionic bond is the attraction between metal and non-metal. It also involves transfer of electrons. While covalent bond is the attraction between non-metals and it happens through sharing of electrons. Now for today's lesson, we're going to talk about hydrocarbons. But before that, let us discuss first carbon. Carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table. It has a valence electrons of four. Like other non-metals, carbon needs to bond with other atoms. Since carbon has four valence electrons, each valence electron participates in the bonding and distributes evenly over the atom surface. Carbon can also bond with itself. This ability makes the carbon a unique atom. Because of this uniqueness, carbon can produce numerous organic compounds including all kinds of chain and ring molecules. Carbon forms more compounds than most other atoms, and it is the primary components of organic compounds. One of these is hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons is organic compound that consists of hydrogen and carbon. Each hydrocarbon molecule consists of carbon backbone with hydrogen attached to that backbone. A single carbon atom can bond to four hydrogen atoms. There are different types of hydrocarbons which includes alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Alkanes have only single bonds between carbon atoms and they are called saturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes have at least one double bond carbon to carbon. Alkynes have at least one triple bond carbon to carbon. Alkenes and alkynes are called unsaturated hydrocarbons. Now let's start with alkanes. These are the simplest hydrocarbon which consists of single bond of carbon to carbon. Again, a single carbon atom can bond to four hydrogen atoms to become stable. As I mentioned a while ago, carbon can bond with itself. For example, carbon bond to another carbon. We all know that carbon have four valence electrons and need four electrons to become stable. Now, in this example, since carbon already share its one valence electron to another carbon, how many hydrogen do we need for the first carbon to become stable? Yes, we need three hydrogen atoms. How about the second carbon? How many hydrogen do we need for the second carbon to become stable? Yes, we also need three hydrogen atoms. Now, how about when there are three carbon atoms? How many hydrogen do we need for the first carbon to become stable? Yes, we need three hydrogen atoms. How about the second carbon? How many hydrogen do we need for the second carbon to become stable? Yes, we need two hydrogen atoms since the other two electrons are bond to other carbon. How about the third carbon? How many hydrogen do we need for the third carbon to become stable? Yes, we need three hydrogen atoms. Now, this structure is what we call the expanded structural formula. Aside from this one, we can also use condensed structural formula. Condensed structural formula show the order of atoms like structural formula but are written in a single line to save space and make it more convenient and faster to write out. Condensed structural formulas are also helpful when showing that a group of atoms is connected to a single atom in a compound. Now, how are we going to write condensed structural formula? For example, for this one, we're going to write first the carbon bond. Then after that, we're going to count how many hydrogen is bonded to that carbon. For the first carbon, how many hydrogen is bonded? Yes, we have three. So we're going to write CH3. For the second carbon, we have two hydrogen, so we're going to write CH2. For the third carbon, we're going to write CH3 since we have three hydrogen atom. Now, let's try this one. Again, we're going to write 
the carbon first, then followed by the hydrogen. So for this example, we have two carbon and each carbon have three hydrogen. And next for this one, obviously it is CH4. Now this expanded and condensed structural formula can be compressed into molecular formula. When we say molecular formula, it consists of chemical symbols for the constituent elements followed by numeric subscript describing the number of atoms of each element present in the molecule. For example, for this condensed structural formula, how many carbon do we have? Yes, we have 3. How about the hydrogen? Yes, we have 8. So we have 3 carbon and 8 hydrogen. Then the molecular formula for this one is C3H8. How about this one? How many carbon do we have? Yes, we have 2. And how many hydrogen do we have? Yes, we have 6. So therefore, the molecular formula is C2H6. And for this one, we still have CH4. Now, how are we going to name hydrocarbons? The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry System is used for the naming of organic compounds. As a general rule, the name should end with the last syllable of the family or group where it belongs. So therefore, in naming alkane group, it should end with A and E. Aside from that, in naming hydrocarbons, we must also consider the number of carbons. For example, if the number of carbon is 1, then we will use the prefix meth. If there are 2 carbons, we're going to use eth. For 3 carbons, we're going to use prop. For 4, we're going to use but. For 5, we're going to use pent. For 6, hex. For 7, hept. For 8, oct. For 9, non. For 10, dec. Now, let's go back to our previous example. Using a UPAC, let us name these hydrocarbons. For this one, since it only have one carbon, therefore we're going to use the prefix met, then we're going to add the last syllable of the family name which is A and E. So the name of these hydrocarbons is methane. How about this one? Since there are two carbons, we're going to use F, then add the last syllable of the family name which is A and E. So the name of this hydrocarbon is ethane. For this one, since there are three carbons, we're going to use prop, and then add the last syllable of the family name which is A and E. So the name of this hydrocarbon is propane. Now here's the list of the name of alkanes. Now let's try it vice versa. So from the name, we're going to give the condensed structural formula and molecular formula. Let's try with butane. In writing condensed structural formula, you need to first write the carbon. In butane, but indicates that there are four carbon. Then after writing carbon, we're going to write the bond. A and E indicates that there are single bond between those four carbon. Then after writing the carbon and then the bond between those carbons, we're going to supply how many hydrogen is needed per carbon. Just a reminder, carbon needs to share 4 electrons to become stable. So for the first carbon, since one electron is already shared to other carbon atom, we only need 3 hydrogen. For the second, since 2 electron is already shared to other carbon atom, we only need 2 hydrogen. Same with the third carbon. And for the last carbon, we need 3 hydrogen and we're done. Here's the condensed structural formula for butane. Now, how are we going to write the molecular formula without looking at the condensed structural formula? So if the given is just the name of the alkane, we're going to use this general formula where N stands for the number of carbon. For butane, we have 4 carbons, so we have C4. For the hydrogen, 2 times the number of carbon plus 2, so we have 2 times 4 plus 2, that is equals to 10. So therefore, the molecular formula for butane is C4H10. To double check, if it is matched with our condensed structural formula, we have 4 carbon, and for hydrogen, we have 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3, so that is equals to 10, then we have C4H10. Now, let's proceed to alkene. 
Alkene contains double bond between two carbons. For example, two carbon atom with a double bond. With this, both carbon will only need two hydrogen to become stable since they already share two electrons with each other. Now how about this one? How are we going to name this hydrocarbon? First, we need to find where is the location of the double bond. Then once found, we're going to number the carbon and we're gonna start the numbering near the location of the double bond. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, and 4. The double bond is located at carbon 1. Therefore, the name of this carbon is 1-butene. 1 indicates the location of the double bond. Let's do it vice versa. I'm going to give the name of the hydrocarbons, then we're going to write the condensed structural formula. So the given is 3-octene. In writing condensed structural formula, the first step is to determine how many carbons are there. Based on the name, there are 8 carbons since the prefix use is oct. Now we're going to write the 8 carbons. Next, we're going to write the bond between carbons. Based on the name, the double bond is located at the third carbon. So we're going to write the double bond between third and fourth carbon. Now after writing the double bond, we're gonna put the single bond on the other carbon atoms. Then after that, the last step is we're gonna supply carbon with hydrogen. For the first carbon, we need three hydrogen. For the second carbon, we need two hydrogen. For the third and fourth carbon, we only need one hydrogen. For the fifth, sixth, and seventh carbon, we need two hydrogens for each. And for the last carbon, we need three hydrogen. Now let's proceed with alkyne, which contains triple bond. For example, two carbon atom with a triple bond. With this, both carbon will only need one hydrogen to become stable since they already share three electrons with each other. Now how about this one? What is the name of this hydrocarbon? First, we need to find where is the location of the triple bond. Then once found, we're going to number the carbon and we're gonna start numbering near the location of the triple bond. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. The triple bond is located at carbon 2. Therefore, the name of this hydrocarbon is 2-heptine. 2 indicates the location of the triple bond. Hef indicates that there are 7 carbon. Y and E indicates that there are triple bond located at carbon 2. Now, let's do it vice versa. I'm going to give the name of the hydrocarbons. Then, we're going to write condensed structural formula. So, the given is 3-hexine. In writing condensed structural formula, the first step is to determine how many carbons are there. Based on the name, there are 6 carbon since the prefix use is hex. Now, we're going to write the 6 carbons. Next, we're going to write the bond between carbons. Based on the name, the triple bond is located at the third carbon. So, we're gonna put triple bond in between third and fourth carbon. Now, after writing the triple bond, we're gonna put single bond on the other carbon atoms. Then after that, the last step is we're going to supply the carbon with hydrogen. For the first carbon, we need 3 hydrogen. For the second carbon, we only need 2 hydrogen. For the third and fourth carbon, we don't need a hydrogen. Why? Because those two carbons already share its 4 electrons to other carbon atom. Now, for the fifth carbon, we only need 2 hydrogen. For the 6 carbon, we only need 3 hydrogen atoms. Many hydrocarbons have branches attached to a chain. They are called branch hydrocarbons. Now, how are we going to name branch hydrocarbons? For example, this one. I am going to give you the step-by-step -step procedure on how are you going to name branch alkanes. First, you need to locate the parent chain or the longest chain of carbon. Second, Number the carbon atoms of the parent chain starting from the end where the branch is closer. Now, since the branch is located here, we're gonna start the numbering here. Third, name the parent chain. Since there are five carbons, the name of the parent chain is pentane. Fourth, 
name the branch then attach it as a prefix of the parent chain. In naming branch or alkyl group, we're going to apply same rules, number of carbons plus the family name. As you can see on the given, the branch attached have one carbon. So we're going to use the prefix met and we're gonna add the family name which is YL. So met plus YL equals to methyl. Then we're going to attach the branch name to the parent chain name. Then fifth, place the location number of the branch in front of the resulting name. As you can see, the branch is located at carbon 2. Note that commas are used between numbers, dashes are used between letters and numbers. So the name of this hydrocarbons is 2-methylpentane. Let's have another example. We're going to follow same steps. First, locate the parent chain or the longest chain of carbon. Second, number the carbon atoms of the parent chain starting from the end where the branch is closer. So since the branch is closer here, we're gonna start the numbering here. Third, name the parent chain. Since there are six carbons, the name of the parent chain is hexane. Fourth, name the branch then attach it as a prefix of the parent chain. As you can see, there are three branches attached to the parent chain, and we're going to name each branch. This first two branch is methyl, and this one, since there are two carbons, we're going to use prefix et plus yl, therefore, this is ethyl. Now, the question is, which one are we going to write first? Is it the methyl or the ethyl? If there are two or more branch, we're going to write it alphabetically. So, we're going to write first the ethyl followed by methyl. Now, where is the location of ethyl? Ethyl is located at carbon 4. So, we're gonna write 4 ethyl. This indicates that ethyl is located at carbon 4. How about the 2 methyl? Based on the given, the 2 methyl are both located at carbon 2. So, we're going to write 2 2 dimethyl. As you can see, we put prefix di in front of methyl. This indicates that there are two methyl. The number 2, 2 indicates the location of the two methyl. Note that commas are used between numbers, dashes are used between letters and numbers. So here's the name of this hydrocarbon. So 4 ethyl 2, 2 dimethyl hexane. Now let's proceed to branch alkene and alkyne. Let's have this one. We're gonna follow the step-by-step -step procedure. First, locate the parent chain or the longest chain of carbon. Second, number the carbon atoms of the parent chain starting from the end where the double band or triple band is closer. In this example, since the double band is located here, we're gonna start the numbering from this end. Third, find the location of the double band or triple band. Then place it in front of the name of the parent chain. In this example, the location of the double band is at carbon 1. So we're gonna write 1 pentene. Pent indicates that there are 5 carbons. ENE indicates that there are double band located at carbon 1. Fourth step, name the branch. Then place the location number of the branch in front of the resulting name. The branch attached to the parent chain is methyl because there are only 1 carbon. The location of the methyl is at carbon 3, so we're gonna write 3-methyl. The name of this hydrocarbons is 3-methyl-1-pentene. Now, let's have another example. We're gonna follow the step-by-step -step procedure. First, locate the parent chain or the longest chain of the carbon. Second, number the carbon atoms of the parent chain starting from the end where the double band or triple band is closer. In this example, the triple band is located here. So we're gonna start the numbering from this end. Third, find the location of the double band or triple band. Then place it in front of the name of the parent chain. In this example, the location of the triple band is at carbon 2. So we're gonna write 2 heptine. Hept indicate that there are 7 carbons. Y and E indicates that there is a triple band located at carbon 2. For the fourth step, name the branch. Then place the location number of the branch in front of the resulting name. In this example, there are four branches. So we're going to name each branch. This one is ethyl and these three are all methyl. 
Again, if there are two or more branches, we're going to write it alphabetically. So, we're going to write first the ethyl followed by methyl. We have 4 ethyl. 4 indicates that ethyl is located at carbon 4. Then, after writing ethyl, we're going to write methyl. So, we have 466 tri methyl. As you can see, there is a prefix tri in front of methyl. Tri indicates that there are 3 methyl located at carbon 466. So the name of this hydrocarbon is 4-ethyl, 4-6-6-trimethyl, 2-heptyne. Now let's do it vice versa. This time we're going to illustrate the branch hydrocarbons. Let's try this one, 2-2-6-6-tetramethyl-octane. Now I will be giving the step-by-step -step procedure. First, write the carbon chain based on the name of the parent chain. For this example, the name of the parent chain is octane. Oct indicate that there are 8 carbons. If the parent chain indicates that there is a double band or triple band, draw it first. Draw it based on the location written on the name, then draw single bond in between other carbon atoms. In this example, based on the parent name octane, the bond between carbon atoms are just single band. For the third step, write the branch based on the given name. In this example, the name of the branch is methyl. As you notice, there is a prefix tetra in front of methyl. And that indicates that there are 4 methyl and it is located at carbon 2266. For the fourth step, supply the hydrogen needed for each carbon atom. For the first carbon, we need 3 hydrogen. For the second carbon, we don't need a hydrogen since the 4 valence electron of carbon is already bonded to other carbon atom. For the third, fourth, and fifth carbon, we need 2 hydrogen each. For the sixth carbon, we don't need a hydrogen since all the 4 electrons is already bonded to other carbon atom. For the seventh carbon, we need 2 hydrogen. For the 8th carbon, we need 3 hydrogen. Now, let's have another example. Let's have 4 ethyl, 6 methyl, 1 3 heptyene. For the first step, write the carbon chain based on the name of the parent chain. For this example, the name of the parent chain is heptyene. Hept indicates that there are 7 carbons. For the second step, if the parent chain indicates that there is a double band or triple band, draw it first. Draw it based on the location written on the name. Then write the single band in between other carbon atoms. In this example, based on the parent chain, 1,3-heptyene, ENE indicates that there are double bond. Now, have you noticed that there is a di in between hep and ENE? The word di indicates that there are two double bond and it is located at carbon 1 and carbon 3. For the third step, write the branch based on the given name. On this example, the name of the branch is ethyl and methyl. The ethyl is located at carbon 4 while methyl is located at carbon 6. For the fourth step, supply the hydrogen needed for each carbon atom. For the first carbon, we only need 2 hydrogen. For the second carbon, we need 1 hydrogen, for the 3rd carbon, we need 1 hydrogen, for the 4th carbon, we don't need a hydrogen, for the 5th carbon, we need 2 hydrogen, for the 6th carbon, we need 1 hydrogen, for the 7th carbon, we need 3 hydrogen. Let's have another example. Let's have 3 ethyl, 4, 5 dimethyl, 1 heptyne. We're gonna follow the same steps. For the first step, Write the carbon chain based on the name of the parent chain. For this example, the name of the parent chain is heptyne. Hept indicates that there are 7 carbons. For the second step, if the parent chain indicates that there is a double band or triple band, draw it first. Draw it based on the location written on the name. Then draw the single band in between other carbon atoms. In this example, based on the parent name, 1 half time, 1 YNE indicates that there is a triple band and it is located at carbon 1. For the third step, 
write the branch based on the given name. On this example, the name of the branch is ethyl and methyl. The ethyl is located at carbon 3. Notice the word di before methyl. It indicates that there is a 2-methyl. For the fourth step, supply the hydrogen needed for each carbon atom. For the first carbon, we only need one hydrogen. For the second carbon, we don't need a hydrogen since the four valence electrons of this carbon is already bonded to other carbon. Next, for the third carbon, we need one hydrogen. For the fourth carbon, we need one hydrogen. For the fifth carbon, we need one hydrogen. And for the sixth carbon, we need two hydrogen. And for the seventh carbon, we need three hydrogen. 